The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has commend, commenced an indefinite strike over the federal government's inability to meet up with various agreements entered with the union. ASU had declared a two-week warning strike on March 9, 2020, due to the skeletal and actual non-implementation of Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, and Memorandum of Action, MOA. The agreements range from the non-funding of public universities and non-payment of outstanding balance of areas of earned academic allowance. Others are salary shortfalls on the funding and profileration of state universities, NUPEM COVID station panels, renegotiation of 2009 agreement and EPAs. Professor Biodun Ogunyemi, ASU president, announced the decision during a news conference at the end of an emergency National Executive Council NEC meeting on Monday in Abuja. According to Ogunyemi, based on the review of reports from ASU leadership's engagement with government, the NEC concluded that government had failed to satisfactorily address the outstanding issues raised in the FGN ASU 2019 Memorandum of Action. Government has also ignored the objection, objections of ASU against the Integrated Personal and Payroll Information System, EPAS. Consequently, NEC resolved to embark on a total comprehensive and indefinite strike beginning Monday, 23rd March, 2020, until the issue was satisfactorily resolved, he said. Joining us by phone now is Professor Lyle Shaw. Lyle Shaw, good morning to you, Professor. Good morning. They say that when two elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. Is it not apparent to all that the true victims of this prolonged head-to-head -head between government and ASU are the students themselves, who we say are the future of Nigeria. Therefore, this impasse is at the expense of all our future. How do you react to this? Well, let's say that um, we shouldn't uh, personalize any conflict. We, look, we should look at the process. The victim of, you know, whether we, there is a strike or the disagreement between the federal government and ASO, is the Nigerian educational system. We should stop looking at it as if students, parents, we personalize a social problem if we look at it that way. Let's look at the Nigerian educational system. Are we having the, the kind of educational system that can meet our national developmental goals? That is That should be our focus. What, should, what is likely to be the impact the implication of the strike on the educational system and the totality of national development. I think that should be what we should be focusing on. Now, many have argued the fact that this is not the first time ASU went back on, on, on their strike action just to press home its demands and that it's become somewhat redundant. I mean, always going on strike. Are, are there better alternatives other than strike actions? You see, when people talk about that, that ASU is always going on strike, ASU should look at other alternatives. I've never seen anybody bring out what the other alternatives should be. What should be the other alternatives? When you have a union and a government, a national government, enter into certain agreements, and the government fails to implement these agreements, what, what is left for labor to do? To just keep going? and then everything continues to decay? No, I don't think so. There must be some form of action to get the government to do the right thing. So when people talk about alternatives, alternatives, I ask them, what are the alternatives? And nobody has come up with what the alternatives should be. Now, Professor- So that is the issue. Let people come out with what they think should be the alternative to get the government to abide by its own agreement, agreements that were freely entered into. Let people come up, what should be the alternative to ASU's action? Now, Prof, why is this so important that the salaries of lecturers are not paid out of a centralized system? You see, if you look at every university has its own regulation, its own laws, and there is what we call academic autonomy. That's why you have a governing council that is in charge of, you know, the overall policy of the university system. So if government is saying that, no, we want to do away with this kind of autonomy, which is a tradition all over the world, let the government come out and say it, and then amend the law, remove the council, and put the universities under the tutelage or the control of uh, the Federal Ministry of Education or whatever, then we know where we are going. 
But to say that you have a council, there is the law that says the university is autonomous, the council is the employer, and then you go through the back door to now say, oh, we are centralizing your payment without looking at the peculiarities of the system, then it, I, I think it's, it's, against the, it's against the law. Let us abide by the rule of the law. This is a democratic system. All right, Prof, I, I want to ask you this now. Would you say that the strike is justified and other options of dispute resolution, would you say they've been exhausted to justify this strike action? Well, the government has been meeting with ASU. I think the first meeting they had, we all had hopes that the, the issue is being resolved when they said that uh, the ASU platform will be integri integrated with the federal government platform. Only for us to hear that, no, that is no more possible. That, you know, those are the kind of issues. You say something today, tomorrow you, 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 you just uh, abandon what you have said, what you have agreed on, the hope that you have raised in people, and then you do something else. That does not show any seriousness on, on the part of government. I think these are the issues that Nigerians should take on board in the discussion and the attempt to resolve the issue. How serious is government in resolving some of the problems? And it, it appears that people are focusing on the issue of salaries. They are not focusing on the larger issues about agreement that were not uh, implemented, about government failure to live by its own rules. These are issues that we should take on board in some of these things. And now talking about, talking about the issues of payments of salaries, um, let's consider the issue of EP, the EPIS system. Have, have ASU proffered an alternative to the EPIS system in the light of the fact that what the system is meant to address is transparency and accountability? Yes, ASU came out with its own platform. I think the first meeting they had, was it about a week ago, uh, Dr. Ngige came out to say, OK, they are going to integrate the ASU platform with uh, the federal government IPPS. And that raised a lot of hopes, only for them to, to come back to the table for the government to say, no, it's not possible. So these are the issues. Where, where see, this strike? This is the computer age is, you know, comp what, is it, what is it that is beyond the, the, the technology for the integration to take place? Why? Now, where, where would this strike lead us to in, in the event that the government do not budge on this matter? After all, ASU members are not the first to be enlisted on the system. And we hear that over 55% of lecturers are already signed up to the payment system. So where what would this the strike? percentage? 55%. That is not correct. Okay. Please it's bring us up correct. to speed. Yes. It's not, you see, government should come out clean. Let's, let's all, all, the, all the two sides come out clean with Nigeria. It is Nigeria that is suffering. It is the, 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 the educational system that is being destroyed. So that's why we need to sit down and come out clean. Let's put everything on the table and see how it could be done. Now, Professor, you know? while, yes. while I do hear you about the issues of people not personalizing this issue, and yes. also, whilst we're in favor of ASU representing the interests of lecturers and its members, I say again, who is actually speaking up for the interests of the students? Who are the true losers here? <laughs> well, <laughs> you see, we need people. We need people who will speak for Nigeria. We need people who will stand up for the educational system of this country. You see, you need to go to the universities. Sometimes, from my own experience, some of us, even in the social sciences and humanities, you want to do a research, you have to be getting your friends abroad to help you look for uh, academic articles because they have access. We don't have such things here. You forget about the lies being told all over the place that uh, we have, what is the, what, the internet that we have? It's said on work, there's no power. You know, so when some of my colleagues in the sciences, for instance, tell me that they are doing some research, I just laugh because we know what is going on all over the place. We don't have the resources, we don't have the facilities. These are key issues that Nigeria, is not just sending my child to the university to earn a degree. At the end of the day, what does he come up with in terms of knowledge and skills? These lecturers there, what type of research are we doing? We have to look for our friends abroad to help us get articles from uh, online libraries. Many Nigerians are not 
you know, subscribing to these online libraries. Some that subscribe because they couldn't pay, they have disabled them. These are issues. Now, Professor, just before I let you go this morning, what is the way forward from here? We need to fund our educational system. We need to put a process, the process in terms of transparency, because we know that even the little money that is made available, sometimes the administrators, you know, you know mess up with such uh, funds. So this, we need to put up a, a process that will do the right thing at the right time for the right people. Professor Lai Shaw, thank you very much for joining us this morning on News on the Hour and for your time. Thank you very much for having me.